about it because <laughs> scoffers be damned, an insider at the European Space Agency shh, came out and spilled the beans. That's right. There is a planet that most likely has life. And guess what? It's like our neighbor. It's like across the street. It's like not even that far away. And they said that was impossible. All those people that come on there and they say, oh, no, no, Nibiru's not real, even though there's a mountain of evidence that proves that there is something going on outside. Today, we're going to talk about that. I have just so much evidence that is going to point all of you into this I don't know, understanding that change is coming. And I want to start the episode by telling you this is not something to be scared of. This is not something that you should be worried about because it's going to happen regardless. But we need to educate ourselves to it, okay? No planet is going to crash into us. That's not going to happen. But there is something that is heading our way. And today you are going to find out that all the people that said you're nuts, well, now there's proof, you're not. So it turns out, right, over 90% of the uh, you know, solar systems out there, they're binary systems, which means a majority of these solar systems, like the one that we are in, they, every star, every sun has a companion. Has, a, has like a twin. Some have like three, four, five, and six. Over 90% of them, right? Now, this is, this is not something that um, hasn't been you know, talked about. Uh, Nemesis, all you have to do is you know, go back and watch the video I did on this. Nemesis is, it has been theorized and most likely exists. It is our gigantic red dwarf sun that is our companion. Now, we don't have absolute proof that it is there, but, eh, you know, the evidence points towards that. A lot of people will say that, um, no, 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 you know, NASA said that it doesn't exist and um, they've never come out and they've never talked about this and, you know, there's, there's really no evidence. <laughs> uh, well, guess what? It's not really true because NASA back in the day, you know, they actually, uh, they came out and said that there was something going on and, and they said that they were going to send one after the other out there to check it out. They know something's happening, but they're not the only ones. Even the Vatican, you know, they muscled their way into a university. That's the, their big telescope, the infrared telescope called Lucifer. So they have this great telescope. Now, why is it an infrared telescope? Okay, well, a lot of people like to comment. And they like to say, well, you know, if something's that big out there, well, we could see it, right? Well, guess what? It turns out that it is, I mean, it's like just surrounded in this like iron oxide cloud. It doesn't really reflect and give off a lot of heat. So you need this, you know, these high-tech telescopes, which is the reason that, well, we spent how much money to place one right there in Antarctica. Why would they do this? Well, guess what? Because this affects everyone on planet Earth and knowledge is power, and they've been hiding it from us. There was an article back in 1983 in the Washington Post that featured Nibiru, so it's not like this hasn't been around. Take a look. Why in Antarctica? Because that's where you can see it. 
you can't see this anywhere else but the southern, southern hemisphere. For, so for the people that like to come on there and say, oh, well, I'm in the sky and I, I live in Jersey and I can't see it right now. That's because we're not in the southern hemisphere and also we don't have the right equipment. But guess what? Those that are in power do. And they're keeping their eye on it because they know it's coming. Which is why we had Jade Helm, which is why, I mean, Russia has, I mean, I can't tell you, they just, they took all of their Cold War um, nuclear weapons and they're outfitting them and pointing them up at the sky. Why? Because they're worried about the asteroids that are going to be coming in. NASA, NASA, um, a couple of years ago began its NASA, uh, the Asteroid Redirection Mission which just recently, they're asking for partners. Everything is revving up. Why are they doing that? Because when this system moves into our system, it is going to perturb a lot of the, you know, the comets, the asteroids, and they're gonna send, it's like gonna shoot a lot our way, which is probably already happening which is why we're seeing an increase in fireballs. I'm not the only one that's talked about this, and uh, I know I'm not an astronomer, but there are famous astronomers that have. Back in 1940, the Chilean astronomer Carlos Muniz Ferrada. I mean, he just came out and he, he not only said that this intruder was coming, um, he also said it was gonna be disastrous. Now, I, you know, other people, they haven't said it's going to be that disastrous. So I, I don't wanna scare you. I don't like fear. Fear, it's not real. It shouldn't motivate you. We should be prepared, but not thinking the worst because we really don't know what's going to come of it. But Carlos Ferrada, uh, you know, he said that this, he said there was a massive cover up. He said there would be. He said that, that all of the agencies would work together to kind of keep it quiet so that nobody would find out about this. Because if they found out, guess what? People would start acting crazy, right? Even though we should give people more credit than that. The truth sets a person free. It doesn't make them nuts. But he said that there was this huge comet-like planet, right? He called it Herkopolis, I believe. I don't know how to pronounce it. The bottom line is, it's Nibiru. It's another name for Nibiru. And it was in this huge, like, elliptical orbit. Didn't orbit the way our planets orbit. And uh, on this huge cycle, now, you probably are familiar with Sitchin's books, right? Where he said that there's a 3,600 year orbit, like a comet, okay? Well, eh, he may be right, he may be wrong. It doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is, from the Sumerian tablets to, you know, the astronomer, to all of the evidence pointing our way to Dr. Robert Harrington. Harrington was actually interviewed by the man himself. Um, you know, and he, he called this planet, he called it an intruder. And um, I mean, this is not like some Joe Schmo pointing a camera his way, talking on YouTube. That's me. This is the real deal. This guy said it very clearly. Take a look. Uh, of of uh, a celestial body, which you, I think, named in that uh, paper, uh, an intruder, yes. which may have... Uh, collided with or, or, or somehow uh, turned on, on their side both Uranus and Pluto. Uh, it did a lot more than that, as a matter of fact. In that paper, we hypothesized that this intruder passed very close to Neptune, that it dislodged one of what we then think were many satellites of Neptune, and one of them became the planet Pluto. We actually think Pluto was an escape satellite of Neptune. This will also take the orbit of Triton, the big satellite of Neptune, and reverse it. We'll take the orbit of the satellite near it and extend it outwards. We can produce all of the observed aspects of the satellite system of Neptune plus Pluto's orbit just with this one single intruding planet. 
Now, one of the things we, we did in 1978, having made this prediction that there was a, an additional planet, 10th or 12th, depending on your point of view, but it's the, the next one, um, we sort of put our money where our mouth was, as it were, and we went out and we started looking for this thing. And uh, we've been searching for 12 years for this thing. We've been able to refine the search area somewhat, um, get it rather narrowed down. We, we do our predictions based on the observed anomalies in Uranus and Neptune. We actually are currently looking down in the region of Centaurus, which is just south of the, of the constellation Libra, but pretty close to the area that you've talked about. But if, if it is in the kind of orbit that we describe here, it would have to be a planet that would have a mass something like three to five times the mass of the Earth. This would put it uh, intermediate between the gaseous planets like Uranus and Neptune and the terrestrial planets that we we have in the inner part of the solar system. So if if this planet turns out to be in a 3,600 year orbit, then its, its mass would be correspondingly larger. Is that they've noticed these unexplained deviations in Uranus and Neptune, right? And that, that points to a large outer system body that is moving towards us. It's like four to eight times the size of, uh, of Earth, right? Probably bigger. But here's the cool thing, right? Just recently, just this week, I don't know if you heard about Niku. A rebellious planet that they found out of the blue, right? This thing is like real close and it's not orbiting, you know, in a prograde motion or a retrograde motion. It's, it's, it's orbiting opposite. So while these are, you know, our planets are going this way, it's coming this way. They don't really understand that. Now, how can that be? Because a comet kind of travels like that. And this is the interesting thing. Just like Nibiru, it has this tilted kind of orbit where it's kind of going up as well. Isn't that something that right now we're hearing of a, another planet that is right near where <laughs> Nibiru is supposed to be? Dr. Harrington said right there in Centaurus and guess where this planet is? The one that they're talking about right now, Proxima Centauri. Researcher John Moore's sources inside the military has said that there was a secret meeting that took place in New Orleans back in 1979 where they said, look, this thing is going to happen and it's going to happen in our lifetime. I think the time is uh, about here, if you ask me, because, I mean, it seems like everyone is working very, very quickly now, you know? Everything's in place, you know. We got the uh, the governments ready for martial law. Uh, all those underground bunkers and facilities are ready to go for the elite. I know, I know, we're going to be left out, but let's just trust that it's all going to work out because we really don't know what's in store. Not to mention, you know, we have NASA, we have Russia, and we have all governments around the world working together on this one thing. How are we going to keep the meteors and the asteroids and the comets from hitting us, right? That's the big news today, okay? Except for the fact that little by little, they're releasing information about this. Little by little, the truth is coming out. We just heard about that Earth-like planet, right? That can have life, huh? Just like Nibiru. Who's to say the Anunnaki are not coming back? All the mine, all that mining of gold. I mean, my goodness, how many thousands of years have we been working hard to get gold? Because it's like we were all convinced that it was, uh, you know, just so precious. 
And who's to say, you know, that there wasn't a big plan? Who's to say that these ancient religious texts aren't probably true? Who's to say that we aren't genetically altered? Who's to say? Not me. I mean, the evidence is there. You see many different Cro-Magnum man to, you know, Homo sapiens. I mean, there is like these, these leaps that take place historically. Who's to say? Who's to say that all of these UFO sightings aren't increasing um, just by chance and because that we're now connected, because we've been connected since the late 1990s. But the fact of the matter is, they're closer now. Who's to say that uh, things aren't being set up? The big reveal is on its way. I don't know, but I'm excited about it. I will say this, the ISS is uh, shutting down its live feed, which I like at night. I just like watching that on the Ustream. I like watching the, uh, the ISS, you know. But why, why all of a sudden? Why are they just shutting it down? Well, could it be that things are heading our way? Is that the reason that Pepsi did that Black Knight decoded little piece? Little by little, we're kind of being um, pushed along and uh, fed the information and being told that, you know what? Hey, we told you, we told you it was coming, right? Because things are uh, like the Google, remember Google Earth? How the, uh, they had that like, they had that big black square. They had that big black square where the, the coordinates, we knew the coordinates, where Nibiru and the, the system would be, but it was missing. Guess what? It's not missing anymore. Why is that? Most likely because soon they're not gonna be able to hide it anymore. The fact is, from what I've researched and understood, we're not going to really know that you know, this planet, th these planets, I should say, are here until they're right on top of us because it just doesn't reflect light and all that red iron oxide, that, uh, all that garbage that's been traveling with it. You know, for NASA to say that, you know, they're not interested. Um, is kind of peculiar considering that they've launched every single probe into that direction. And the thing that I find most fascinating is that this new, um, you know, this new planet, this new planet that has life, that's our new neighbor, right? This Earth 2 that they're about to call it, that the unnamed source came out and told us about. Well, um, because it was reported in that German Der Spiegel, I guess is the, uh, the name of the, uh, the paper or the article. The article was in a magazine. Um, but I got to tell you something. You know where, I mean, it's, it's right there in uh, Proxima Centauri, which is exactly where they said Nibiru would be. Is that a coincidence? Now, for those people that like to comment and like to say, oh, you uh, will put on your tinfoil hat. I still don't understand that whole tinfoil hat thing. Um, look, in a court of law, the evidence, the evidence is there. There's a reason that the uh, governments of the world are working together. There's a reason that billions of dollars are being shoved towards things like the, uh, the seed bank and, um, you know, these underground uh, cities and not to mention these new programs to uh, redirect asteroids. Oh, my goodness. I mean, this tilted orbit of uh, Nico. I mean, it's crazy because that's what Nibiru is supposed to have, a tilted orbit. How can anyone say anymore that anyone that says that there is, uh, uh, 
there are ancient aliens, that there are, um, there is more to the story than we've been told. How can anyone in their right mind say that it's not a possibility when there is more evidence now than ever before that it is a possibility and most likely coming towards us real, real soon. So I'm excited because my journey with all this started with uh, just a lot of crazy information that just kind of downloaded to me and a lot of coincidences that I was somehow linked to this planet Nibiru. Uh, and dreams out of the blue. I didn't believe in any of this stuff, people. But like I, if you've known me for a while, you know that I love to research and I've just been devouring this subject. And I gotta tell you, there is more evidence out there that this system exists than not. So, you know, if people give you a hard time, don't tell them about it. Just know that you're not alone. Jacob's right here, and I love you, and I thank you for taking the time